I know Christmas is coming, so I make this for you guys. We have two limits, a derivative, a power series, and of course we are going to finish this with an integral. Let's just go ahead and get started, and let's do the limits first. And notice that I put this right here to be the reciprocal of that, so if we can figure this out, that's just the reciprocal answer. So let's see, if x is approaching infinity, ln x goes to infinity, likewise for square root of x, that also goes to infinity. Infinity over infinity is indeterminate, but we can use Laputal's rule. So let's go ahead and proceed. Thanks to Laputal, we can just take the derivative on the top and the derivative on the bottom. So this is just the limit as x approaching infinity. On the top, we get 1 over x. On the bottom, we have 1 over 2 square root of x. Simplify this a little bit, I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 square root of x. So this and that cancel. This is the limit as x approaching infinity. Square root of x over x. This is x to the 1 half power. This is x to the first power. So we will have x to the 1 half power on the bottom. So we will have square root of x right here, and also 2 times 1, just 2. Then we see when x goes to infinity, it's just 2 over square root of infinity. That will give us 0. So this integral starts with 0. And for the top right here, since it's just a reciprocal, we have 1 over 0, but it's talking about limit. So we just get past the infinity. Now that's past the. So done for that. Now moving to the next part. Let's do the derivative. Let me put this down for you guys. This is the same as taking the derivative of sine of x squared and then squared. So from the outside, let's put the power to the front and minus 1 because of the power rule. We have 2 and then the inside state, so sine of x squared. And then use the chain rule right here. Multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cosine. And then this input stays. And finally, multiply by the derivative of this inside, which will get 2x. And that's pretty good, but we can actually make this better. Because when we have 2 times sine cosine of the input, we can use the double angle identity to kind of condense it. So this right here is actually just sine of 2 of the angle, thanks to a double angle identity. And of course, right here we still have that 2x. So the numerator is just equal to that, which is 2x times sine of 2x squared. Pretty good. Now finally we have that, well not finally, because we still have the integral. But this thing right here, hmm, we have an infinite series, so how can we handle that? Let's put this into a summation form, so we have the summation. n goes from 0 to infinity. Notice this, 2 and 6. In fact, the 2 is just the same as 2 factorial. 6 is the same as 3 factorial. So we are talking about 0 factorial, which is just 1, right? And then 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, and so on, so on, so on. So we have n factorial on the bottom. As of the top, 2, 4, 6, so on, so on. It's just all the even numbers. And we can look at this as x squared and then to the nth power. And do you guys recognize what this function is? Yes, this right here is just nicely equal to e to the x squared power. So the denominator is just e to the x squared power, just like that. So let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit, and then we are going to focus on really figuring this integral out, and we have an improper integral. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just equal to the integral going from 0 to infinity, and we have uh, that, so let's put down 2x sine of 2x squared, and then let's bring this up, but just make the exponent negative, e to the negative x squared power, like so. Cool. Now how do we integrate this? Let's do a u substitution. And this is actually very nice. Have a look. I'm going to let u equal to just x squared. And you'll see, differentiating both sides, we get du equals 2x dx. And we have that right here, very, very nicely. Aha, uh -huh. I set this up perfectly, huh? 
Have a look. When x is equal to 0, put it here, u will begin with 0. And when x approaches infinity, put it here, u will also go to infinity. And then this and that is just the u, let's put it at the end. Here we have sine. The two stays, but the x squared is the same as u. And then here we have e to the negative x squared, which is just u. And then we are in the u world. And let's just figure this out. And how do we integrate this? Well, this is a standard calculus 2 integral. We have a sine times exponential. Use integration by parts, and this is going to be the one that you are going to get repeating case, right? So let's go ahead and do the integral right here. I'm just going to put this down, d and i, of course, the di method for integration by parts. Let's get a plus or minus to get ready. Let's put down three of them, and we see Let's differentiate e to the 2u. It doesn't matter which one you pick, right? So just do that. Sine of 2u, and then let's integrate e to the negative u. If you switch this at the end, we will still end up with the same answer. Differentiating this, we get cosine of 2u, and use the chain rule, we have a 2 right here. Do this again, we will have negative sine of 2u, and then multiply 2 again, so this right here will be 4. Integrating e to the negative u, you get e to the negative u first, but then divide it by negative 1, so you have negative. Do it again, e to the negative u, divided by negative 1 again, it's positive. We stop right here because we notice the function part, e to the 2u, sorry, sine of 2u and e to the negative u repeats from the original. So we stop. So what exactly does this mean though? Check this out. Well, we're just going to do this times this, this times that. That's the first two parts of the answer. And I will just put a little note right here. The integral of that, just the, def the indefinite integral. Sine of 2u times e to the negative u, du. We are going to get this times that, which is negative e to the negative u times sine of 2u, and then this times that, which is minus 2 e to the negative u cosine of 2u. And then lastly, don't forget, we still have to multiply this row and then put that inside of an integral. So right here, we will have to minus, here we have a 4, and then the integral, this and that, sine of 2u e to the negative u in the u world. As you can see, this right here repeats from here, but here we have negative 4 of them. So we will have to add this on both sides. So this is one integral plus four altogether. We will get five of them. Five integral of sine of two u e to the negative u du is just that. And I'm going to factor things out. I'm going to factor out negative e to the negative u. And we get sine of two u plus, because I factored that out, and then we have two cosine of 2u. Here we have the 5. Let's divide everybody by 5. So ladies and gentlemen, the integral that we want is, is just going to be negative 1 over 5. And then also let's put this down on the bottom, e to the u. And then we have all that. So sine of 2u plus 2 cosine of 2u. Yay! So that's the answer for that. And then finally, we just have to do the limits for it. So let me just put this down nicely for you guys. Perhaps let me just put this on the top and then depends how you want to do it. Let me just write down negative and then we have sine of 2u plus 2 sine, sorry, 2 cosine of 2u and then one more parenthesis, and then divide it by 5e to the u. And then ladies and gentlemen, here's the time that we are going to do this. When we plug in infinity, this is just sine function, so the maximum value is 1, the minimum value is negative 1, it's finite. This right here, it's again between negative 1 and 1, multiplied by 2, it's between negative 2 and 2. Together, it's just going to be finite. You don't have to worry about what it is, it's finite. But when you have infinity to here, 
is e to the infinity, which is infinity, times 5 is still infinity. So when we plug infinity, we first get 0. So the first part is 0. And then we are going to minus, right, plug in 0. So I'll work this out for you guys. We have negative, and then we have sine of 2 times 0, and then plus 2 times cosine of 2 times 0. OK, all over 5e to the 0th power. Yay. All right, let's work this out. That's 0. Doesn't matter. Right? This right here is cosine 0, which is 1. And so that means the top is 2, like that. This is 1, so the bottom is just 5. Negative, negative is just positive. So ladies and gentlemen, all in all, we just end up with positive 2 over 5 for the final answer. Yes, so I hope you guys enjoyed this all-in-one calculus question with all the ingredients. And if you want to learn more about calculus, you should definitely check out our sponsor today, Brilliant.Work. Brilliant is an online learning platform with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, and computer science. And since you are already watching my videos, then I know you like calculus. And let me tell you, Brilliant makes it even better. Their calculus lessons are all interactive, so you are not just going to memorize the formulas, but instead, you will be learning the concepts and the ideas via their animations and storytelling. As a calculus teacher, students often ask me how they can learn calculus on their own in a fun way, and I will always recommend Brilliant to them. With a 30-day free trial, you can even get started today, and if you use the link in the description, brilliant.work slash blackpinrepan, and you can get 20% off discount. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I also want to thank you guys for checking them out.